This is five on your side at five, focused on you. And we begin with a five on your side exclusive, a $745 million verdict for a family whose loved one was killed in a car crash. Good evening, I'm Brent Solomon. The driver who hit the 25 year old victim was huffing before the accident. Mercedes McKay is in studio now with the details you'll only see on Five on Your Side. Mercedes. Brent, RI team's Christine Byers was the first to break this story today. That multi million dollar verdict just came down Friday. The jury found the companies who manufacture and sell the product the most responsible for the death of the 25 year old woman. On Friday, September 8th, in the St. Louis County Courts, a jury awarded a $745 million verdict to the family of Marissa Polite. The 25-year-old was killed on Sunday, October 18th in 2020 when Trenton Geiger crashed into the Total Access Urgent Care in Baldwin, where Polite was working as a radiology tech. Baldwin police said before the crash, Geiger was huffing fumes. The fumes were later discovered to be inhaled from a whippet dispenser full of nitrous oxide. Geiger drove through oncoming lanes on Clarkson Road, across a grassy area, through the parking lot, and into a light pole and tree. He then hit Polite outside the urgent care building just 15 minutes after it closed. Initially, Polite's parents filed a lawsuit against the driver in the urgent care. Then in March of 2021, the case changed course, and lawyers went after the manufacturer and retailer that sold the dispenser to Geiger. According to the National Library of Medicine, nitrous oxide is an addictive opioid agent. The attorney for Polite's family, John Simon, alleged the company willingly, quote, poison people for profits with their product. The defendants in the case were Coffin Cardinal LLC and United Brands Corporation. United Brands manufactures the product Geiger used moments before the crash. Coffin Cardinal is one of the many stores that sells it. The trial lasted two weeks. In the end, the jury found United Brands responsible for 70% of the verdict, Coffin Cardinal responsible for 20%, and Geiger responsible for 10%. The 22-year-old pled guilty this year to involuntary manslaughter and drug charges in connection with police death. He's now in prison. While this doesn't take away from the loss police family has gone through, Simon says, quote, the jury punished these companies exactly how they deserve to be punished. Coffin Cardinal actually hung up on five on your side when we asked for a comment. United Brands Corporation hasn't responded to our request for a statement. Now, it's unclear whether these companies will appeal. Polite's lawyer believes both Coffin Cardinal and United Brands knew the addictive nature of their product and said Geiger used it, quote, as they intended. All right, Mercedes, great work there. Tonight, one person is recovering and several others are displaced after an apartment fire in St. Anne. It happened just before 10 last night at the Heritage Place Apartments. Firefighters saw huge flames coming from the second floor balcony, which extended to the third floor. They evacuated at least 30 people from that part of the building. One person was taken to the hospital. We don't know what that person's condition is or what caused the fire. Let's go ahead and see if we can get some live images now over the St. Louis skyline. What a beautiful sunny day to spend outside and to visit the many festivals happening in our area. Meteorologist Gary Frank now with your weather first forecast. Hey, Gary. Hey, good evening, Brett. A pretty nice evening and pretty nice afternoon, right? We started off cooler. We were in the 50s and you know, it felt pretty nice. This is that kind of early fall feel that we're starting to work our way into September now that summer is coming to a close and we'll still see some warm days, but right now cloud cover has kept us to around 80 degrees, mid to upper 70s. Otherwise, even as we zoom in just a little bit, we're still sitting at 74 in Warrenton, 77 Mount Vernon, 76 in Litchfield. Over the next several hours, we'll still see that cloud cover, the thicker cloud cover, off to the east. For the most part, we'll continue to see a pretty nice evening uh, that keeps some mosquitoes out. So that's nice. Uh, I mean, out as in terms of not being around because it's going to be nice uh, with lower humidity and dry weather. So if you have that patio weather this evening, still really nice. We'll hold steady in the mid 70s here for now. But over the next few days, we'll continue to monitor the fact that it is even cooler than this when you may see temps in the 40s in the morning and what we can expect as a trend in the extended forecast. All right, Gary, stay close. Well, tonight, more than a thousand people are dead after a powerful 6.8 magnitude earthquake struck Morocco last night. This is the biggest earthquake to hit that area in more than a century. It damaged several buildings and walls in ancient cities. Morocco's king ordering the armed forces to help lead search and rescue operations. Well, with more and more earthquakes happening all around the world, Brandon Lewis from our National Verified team looks into a social media account that claims it can predict when major earthquakes will happen. This X account with more than 50,000 followers claims it can predict when earthquakes will hit, citing 18 years of research. Some followers want to know if it's really possible to predict earthquakes. So let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Geological Survey, 
seismologist Lucy Jones, and Jackie Kaplan Auerbach, Associate Professor of Geology at Western Washington University. Earthquake predictions would give people time to evacuate and prepare, which experts say could save lives. But all of our sources say doing that is currently impossible. There are some arguments that it may never be possible. There are some arguments, scientific arguments, that suggest that earthquakes really are fundamentally random events. As for that X account that posts quake warnings, Jones points out nearly all of their supposed predictions have been wrong. So what is possible? Our sources say at best scientists can estimate the probability that a significant earthquake will occur within a longer time frame. And those are things like in 50 years, there is a 30% probability that we'll experience this type of earthquake. That helps us with planning. That helps us know where to put our resources for, for seismic retrofit. Some states have deployed early warning systems, but these systems only send alerts in the seconds between the start of a major earthquake and when you'll feel shaking. So no, it is not possible to predict earthquakes. If you live in an earthquake prone area, the best thing you can do is ensure you have a preparedness kit and a communications plan for your family. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Tonight, a man is facing multiple charges two days after a deadly shooting in the city's Hamilton Heights neighborhood. 27-year-old Dwayne Davis is charged with first-degree murder, robbery, armed criminal action, and unlawful possession of a gun. He's accused of killing 45-year-old Jesse Jones of Ellsbury. Police found Jones unconscious and not breathing at a home on Hamilton Terrace Thursday afternoon after being shot. Davis is now behind bars. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer will have much more on this story tonight at 10. There's some good news now for Hyundai owners. Today and tomorrow, the Urban League is teaming up with St. Louis County to give out free anti-theft devices. This is happening in Jennings, and it's all in response to that rise of Hyundai and Kia thefts right here in our area. Organizers say the process is quick and easy. It doesn't take very long at all, so you can just drive through they will install the software, they will show you exactly what they're doing, and you can sleep more comfortably at night once you get this done. Now you can stop by the Urban League in Jennings until 7 tonight, and again tomorrow from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m., and you don't need an appointment. A reminder for drivers on both sides of the river, the entire MLK Bridge is closed from the I-55, 64, and 70 exit ramps to the MLK Bridge and 3rd Street in Missouri. MoDOT and IDOT crews are sealing decks there. The roadway will reopen early Monday morning. Well, the southbound Interstate I-170 ramp from westbound I-270 is also closed. Crews are repairing the decks on the ramp there. Drivers are asked to use an alternative route. The ramp will also reopen in time for early morning rush hour on Monday.